Hey there folks, how's it going? Tex-Mex food is something I absolutely adore, but for the longest time, I just couldn't make it at home. No matter what I tried, it ended up sad and bland, under or overcooked, nothing like the vibrant, spicy, delicious food I was getting in restaurants and from street food vans. I tried everything, different mixtures of spices, changing up the ingredients. All this changed one fateful night in Mexico when I got talking to the chef in a local cafe and after one tequila too many, he imparted to me the one secret ingredient I was missing in all my attempts. Quickly realising his mistake, he swore me to secrecy but from that day to this, whenever I do Tex-Mex, it goes down a storm. Everything changed and I realised this secret was too good to keep. I couldn't be the only person outside Latin America who knew this, so stick around because today, I break the vow I made all those years ago. Today, I share this wisdom with you. Let's get to it. I'm making fajitas today, and to get started, I'll chop up one brown onion. Now, I don't wanna to go too fine with this. I just roughly chop it into a sort of medium dice using the usual method of halve, peel, slice and dice. Next up, I've got two regular sized bell peppers in regulation red and green, plus this beautiful sweet Ramiro pepper. This adds a nice sweet counterpoint to the very slight bitterness in the bell peppers and it helps build out some more interesting flavours. You can of course go with whatever vegetables you like here. I'm just doing my basic fast fajita recipe today but feel free to pimp these up with whatever you like. Experimentation as always is your friend. You'd be surprised at the range of things that work in this dish. Anyway, for today, I'll just chop up those bell peppers using my new favourite method. I'll just fillet the flesh from the core, leaving the stalk, most of that membrane and all of those seeds in the centre. Just discard that middle piece and I'm left with the flesh, which I'll deal with in a moment, right after I open and de-seed the sweet pepper. I approach this just like I would a chilli, so a quick slice along the length and then open it up and just go in with a knife and cut out the seed pod. I don't know if it's a seed pod, whatever. If this were a chilli, I'd probably remove some of the membrane too, depending on who I was cooking for. But in these sweet peppers, there's really no need, IMHO. On the subject of chilies, if you have fresh chilies lying around and you like a bit more heat, feel free to chop a few up and throw them in with the rest of the veg at this point. Anyway, that done and the seeds discarded, I'll just mow through this with my knife, cutting it into medium sized chunks. Then I'll roughly slice the bell peppers into strips. Now my knife is super sharp, but if yours isn't, or if you're less confident with your knife skills, then a good tip here is to turn them soft side up and slice from that side. The exact opposite of what I'm doing here. If your knife is slightly blunt or if you're a bit hesitant for whatever reason, doing it that way makes it much less likely that your knife will slip and cut you. With all the vegetables, how thick or thin you go is up to you. This is my preference. I find it gives me a great balance between cooking time and bite in the finished dish. And I do like these to have some bites as a texture counterpoint to the rest of the ingredients. No, 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 too soon, too soon. You're not ready for that yet. Let's prep some protein. I'm using chicken today because it's what I have. Other meats work well here. Steak is awesome, or even something like pulled pork. If you wanna go veggie, then portobello mushrooms sliced fairly thickly are a fine thing too. Whatever you're using, slice it into strips of this sort of size to make your life easier when it comes to eating these things later. Cooking these goes by real fast, so pay attention and see if you can spot that secret ingredient. To begin, I'll get a cast iron over a high heat and add in a glug of oil. I'm using sunflower here, but any high smoke point oil will work. And once that's really hot and shimmering, in go the onions and the sweet pepper. I'm working in two batches because I don't want to crowd the pan. If your pan is bigger, you can do the bell peppers at the same time if you like. Just be sure they've got plenty of room so everything doesn't just steam. Resist the urge to stir these too often. Let them sit and build up some really good color. Once the onions have started to brown nicely and there's some char on the peppers, I'll pull those out to a plate and go in with the bell peppers. There's nothing new here, keep the heat high, let them sit and develop some good colour. And then once they've coloured well and cooked through without being overdone, pull those out to the plate as well. Now for the chicken, I want some great colour on this too. And notice that I haven't added any spices yet. I'm going to fry this hard and any spices that we add now will just burn. I just add another squeeze of oil to the pan and then in goes the chicken, still over that high heat. Make sure your extraction is running at this point or open a window. This is gonna smoke, fair warning, but it is gonna be worth it. And again, resist the temptation to move it around too much. Let it sit, build up some good color, turn each piece once or twice until it looks good, like this. 
I will add a grip of salt at this point just to kick off the seasoning and then just let it cook maybe five minutes or so. Once it's got some good colour and is almost but not quite cooked through, I go back in with the vegetables and I'll follow those with a squeeze, maybe a teaspoon of tomato puree. Now you can use fresh garlic for this, but I like this garlic puree in my Tex-Mex dishes. The flavour works well, it's a little bit more forgiving of the heat so it doesn't burn quite so easily. And remember that heat is still on full at this point. And while those begin to cook, I'll build out that spice story, starting, of course, with cumin. This is a total must-have. It's the signature flavour of the dish, so go big or go home. I use maybe a third of this small jar, which might seem like a lot, but trust me, you need it. Adjust it up or down to your taste, but don't be shy. I'll follow that with some smoked paprika, and if you watch my videos regularly, you'll know how much I love this stuff. Again, I'm not holding back a good amount of that, maybe a quarter of this small jar, probably a dessert spoonful. Next is some mild chilli powder. Adjust this depending on your heat preference, but I'm cooking for kids today, so mild it is. This will add a wonderful floral chilli flavour without that burn. I'll add maybe a teaspoon of that and then I'll finish off the spicing with some onion salt. Celery salt works well here too if you don't have onion salt. If you don't have either of them then half as much regular cooking salt will do the trick. If you have the onion salt or the celery salt go with about half a teaspoon. The tomato puree and garlic have had a minute to come up to temperature now and over this heat they're probably about to burn so I'll very quickly move those around and then just stir everything together. The chances of things will be looking a little dry at this point. If so, just add a little more oil. I'm using corn oil here because it's the first one that came to hand. Stir it through, making sure to get those purees and the spices evenly distributed. And that's pretty much it. I'll lower the heat very slightly at this point and just let everything come together for three or four minutes, stirring very occasionally, and then I'll pull it off the heat, move it over to a board and serve immediately while it's still sizzling. Warm some tortillas through, dish up some good quality salsa or make your own. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a salsa video and let everyone build their own fajitas. I promise everyone will be happy with these. And that secret ingredient, well, I'm sure you guessed it by now and let me know in the comments if you did. But the closely guarded secret that was shared with me all those years ago is heat. For almost any Tex-Mex dish, turn it up to 11 and cook quickly. It will change your life. That's your fajitas taken care of folks and now you're in the Tex-Mex mood check out this video next for an awesome beef dish that's perfect for feeding the